Okay. Um, so welcome everyone. Um, today we're gonna move on to chapter two, which is basic UI. Um so last week, um, when we started our shiny the chapter one, we basically discussed that um um shiny interface consists of three uh, or main two main component the input and outputs um, whereby shiny encourage separation of code that generate the user interface and the code that drives you know your apps behavior which um you know we have something in the um, you know mp and we have something from the um server side so in this chapter we're going to discuss about these basic ui so we're going to discuss about input and we're going to discuss about outputs uh, which are all part of UI and maybe um, a bit of uh, late functionalities. Um, right, so let's move on. So <clears throat> as we can see here, um, we already um, mentioned that um, um, the UI uh, is uh, one of the uh, main interface, one of the two things uh, where whenever you want to have, um, you know, uh, define an app, you start with Shiny and, you know, you have your, this kind of, um, you know, your interface and you have some server side, which, uh, you know, the interface and server and Shiny, um, you have to do two things. Um, so what is happening here is that um, um, you always have what you call input ID. Uh, let me show it here uh, particularly. Okay, so yeah, so you always have what is called um you know input. For example, here uh, we have text input, we have password input, we have um text area input. This is one of the example of UI as input. So the first thing we're gonna discuss is about this kind of uh, you know input, and when we finish with input we're gonna move on to start discussing about the output. So we, what we can see here is that we have something like this test input, we have something like this password input, we have something like this um, text area input. Now, obviously when you have any input, it has many parameters. So for example, when we see text input here, um, we can see it has the first one is input ID, which is the first, argument so everything we have we must have the input id so for example here because the tested input we said this is the name um what is this is password input password um because here we are asking what is your name so we just named the input you know name um tell me the story you can see tested we just name it input so these are some of the stuff we can see here and um, we have level we have value for example for this particular case and you can see here the first argument is input ID, we didn't put like input ID equals to this, but we can put the, you know, the value by default. And the second one is the level. So here is the level here, as we can see, and the value is um, um something that, uh, you know, if you have default value and you can see we that can have the width, we can have the placeholder, right? So this is basically what we can have for input. So when we run this guy, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, Um, what's happening? I cannot run this guy. Oh, okay. This is it. So we can see here we have text input. We have something like this. We have password. We have something like this. We have something like this. But we can see here we just put use some default. But when we look at the text input here, We, when we look at this, we can have several other, you know, argument here, but these are some of the things we have. So we can see their value, placeholder, value and level. So that's basically um, what this guy is telling us is that we may have input ID, which contain only letters and also numbers and underscore. So the input ID here, that is, it contains only letters, numbers, and, you know, all these basic naming you know, convention of variable in R. And the input ID must be unique. So here I cannot have a name and here I cannot have a name and, you know, so it must be unique. Um, the next thing is, is what can, 
one input. So what can we input? So we can have several input, text, numeric, dates. Um, we can have limited choices. What this means is that you can provide the choices you want to use. You can upload file and action buttons. Oh, these are all input and we're gonna see them. So if we look at the first one, um, um, the numeric input, I mean, uh, the text input. So here we can see we have seen the uh, text input where you can see the text string, we have input, we have password and whatsoever. Now let's look at the next, another one, which is numeric input. So here we have an example. Um, if we run this guy, uh, viewer as well. So we can see here, we have, you know, um, numeric. We can see numeric num number one, the value is zero. Um, the, you know, the minimum is zero, the maximum is 100 and step by two. So what this means is that the value is by default value you will see here is zero. The minimum value you can give is zero, the maximum is and step of two. So for example, here when I click two, so you can see the step of this. And when we look at this guy, we can see all this, you know, uh, um, uh, numeric input. We can see level input ID, this is the input ID. The level, this is the level. The value, this is the value zero. You can see we have default value is zero. The minimum is zero. The maximum is, um, you know, this value and the width um, uh, is not. So you can, so we can say here this width, so this numeric input, right? Okay, yeah. So you can see the width, you can provide something like this. Um, we can see something like this equals to, um, hundred percent. Um, you know, we can say hundred percent. Uh, this value, something like this. So we can do something like. That. And when we run this, let's see what will happen. So you can see it hundred percent. It means it's spanned to the whole page you are working on. Um, if we say fifty percent, so you can see something like. That. So um, oh, I say five. So you can see something like this. So this is basically, um, you know, um, all of this argument. And the, um, if you are worried what this, um, you know, I stuff does, we can quickly. So we have another slider input here. So the slider input, what it does is, as we can see here, um, it allow it give us something to do the slide, right? Um, also the something. This is the input ID. The level here, the value is here, the minimum is here. This, uh, but also this guy's slider input has several other you know, um, argument uh, that you may not see them. So you can see we have slider input, we have round, we have tick, we have animate, all this one will, you know, uh, have different values. We can see, you can try that and see this other value, but the same slider input here, you can have range. So for example, here we have a single value. So if you look at them here, the value, if you go to slider, um, what is the value? The initial value of the slider after uh, either a number. So here we can see the initial value of the slider, whether um, a number, uh, we can see here, this is a number, right? Uh, we can see, for example, um, uh, value 50. Yeah, but uh, you can give, um, you know, uh, a range. Um, what is it, the value? O deck and a lens one vector will create a, a regular slide. A lens two vector will create a double-ended slide. So you can see here, we have lens two vector. Um, that's why here we can see we have, you know, uh, you know, this, um, you know, these, uh, you know, this stuff. So this is basically the input and we have seen the text and we have seen the input. Um, anyone want to add something regarding these inputs? Anyone wants to add anything? So this is basically the text string and numeric variable. So let's move on. Um, so every output is coupled with a render in the server. So what this means that um, we have already seen that uh, we have several input. If, for example, here we have text input, um, text input, password, text area. So every input we have must have a corresponding rendered version. Um, you know, it must have um, a render uh, in the UI. So we can see here, uh, oh, here they didn't, okay, this is the only UI. Okay, let me think if I have this. So again, okay, anyway, let me just explain it here. So what this means is that, um, oh, we don't have it yet. We don't have it yet. Okay, that is all right. So we may come it later, but that's the idea is that every input must have uh, a render correspondence in the render. We'll see that in a bit.
Um, then another one is inputs, uh, date, limited choice, file, object, and action button. So let's look at um, another one uh, here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, dates. So here we have dates. Nope. Okay, so we have dates. So we can see here we have date input, we have date range, right? So we can see here um, the moment you run that, we can see here by default it's using the US base uh, date format. And uh, we don't specify the date, but it uses a different, it will pick up the default date in your computer. So when we run this guy, what we see is that um, date input. So select the input of your date. You can just see the calendar. But one may say, okay, now I didn't spare anything, but it just showed me the date today. So if you use the current date in your computer and you know the level, the level um, you know, we have this, and when is your born, we can see that date range input. But after, um, if you want to receive as input the range, something that happens uh, between this particular date to this, you can use date range. But if you want to collect the date birth date, um, birth date, date of birth, you can use this one. But if you want to select, um, you know, for example, when do you start the college and when do you graduate, right? So you need to have the start and end date. So we can use something like this. So all of these guys as well, we can see that they have diff um, different kind of, you know, uh, also, uh, you know, uh, argument, we can see input level, um, week start. So for example, by default is US-based. So if you are in another country and you want to change the format of the date, you can, you know, change the format. By default, this is the format. Um, you can also, you know, uh, change this week start, how it start, and you can change the language and, you know, all these other stuff um, mentioned here. You can check them if you want to do other stuff with them. All right, anyone want to add something regarding this? The limited choices. Um, so let's move on to the next one, which is limited. So what this means is that um, limited choice, it means that uh, you want to ask the user to select from predefined choices. That's limited choices. Um, for example, the dates we saw just a bit, it allowed the user to select any date, right? Um, for example, also again, this one, it allowed the user to select any of these, you know, date. Um, the text also input allow user to select, you know, from any to input anything. But maybe you have, you know, selection of, you know, uh, uh, some stuff. For example, animals. Yeah, we have something like that, and we want a user to select based on that. So we have select input. You can see them a radio buttons. So we can use do two things um, to allow user to select from this guy. So more or less, it's still the same thing because we are still under the input. You can see the same thing you have. We have select input. We just, okay, this is the state. This means the level, animal, this is the animal. And what is your forever state? State the name, state, and animal. So let's run this um, and see what will happen. So when we run this guy, we can see that uh, um, the first one, what is your favorite state? We can see because it's select input, right? So it allows you to select input, for example, like this. And um, what about this one? radio button um it allow you it will show you a radio button to select input so this is what they call limited choices it gives you some choices to be done but those choices are predefined uh, you must choose from these selections that's limited choice and this is also um input um you know uh from shiny anyone want to add something before we move on Um, then there is a file uploads and action buttons, right? So let's look at the file button, um, file upload and action buttons. So we can see here, okay, radio button examples. Oh, okay, um, radio button. Mm, okay, so another thing is um, we have radio button here. You can see radio buttons here, right? Um, you can have, if you look at this radio button here, we can go to this. So we can see we have several stuff right here, right? Um, what this means is that there is something called choice name and choice value. If you select choice name, um, for example, um, let me give this one. You can see here by default, we use this guy. Let me go back, radio button. Uh, let me disable this guy. So if I run this, and if you look at it, you can see radio button, right? So it just gives you some radio button to ch choose from, right? To choose from. And 
we just say radio button and we give this animal and we provide the options that uh, you know choose that but you can do much more than this um let me show you these uh, options where for example you have okay so you can see here you want to select um you know uh provide the values you know it's not like you are using um uh you know uh predefined value something like that so you can use what is called choice name and choice value so these two things must go together when you have this if we look at this one here uh choice name list of names and values choice name and choice value list of names and value respectively that are displayed to the user in the app and correspond to the each choice of this reason so you can see list of names and values so that's what happened so what are the list of names angry smile sad tear that is the icons that we want to use um choice value so angry they would just see you know angry that's the value if anybody select angry uh this icon um so smile if anyone select smile you can say what he meant is uh happy if anybody selects sad tear you say okay the value he has is sad so you can see here what this means is that you can use some stuff that shows you know not only a keyword, but, uh, you know, as we see here, you can select somebody, select these, um, these. So you can have option with non-text base, for example. Uh, so you can, you know, uh, uh, provide the value of those items and here. So that's what this means. Uh, so this is another option for, um, you know, radio buttons. So as we move on and so we explore more of Shani, we'll be able to see different kind of way to represent all this stuff. All right. Anyone want to add something regarding the radio buttons? Okay. Um, so that means we can continue, all right. Okay, so then the next one is we have what is called file upload. Um, when we go to these, um, you know, uh, oh, okay. There's another one drop down. So let's look at this one guy, drop down. So, that's good. Okay, so this is a drop down. Also, this is a you know a select input. Um, yeah. All right. So this is um select input. We already show that uh select input here. But this one you can see the select input has what is called multiple, which allow you to you know select multiple options. Which um you can see from here. I can see oh, this one. I can see this one. I can see you know all this one. So you can see multiple input. Um, by default, it doesn't allow you to do multiple. You can set this one to true um, so that you can have multiple input. All right. Um, then uh, if you have a very large set of possible options, you may want to use um, cyber size select input so that the complete set of, all right, so this is different something. So, and the last one is um, check um, box, check box. It's also another input. Um, we can see this one here. It just is um, something like this. And uh, we can see we have also file upload, uh, which is this. Um, if we look at this one, we can have this. So you can see this is file upload, allow you to do some kind of upload. So you can see here it's called file input, um, you know, file input. So this is for download, um, upload, and now. So we have seen a lot of, you know, um, this you know the limited choice file upload and also um we have seen you know action buttons right um so the action uh button we can see uh yeah why the action okay this is the action button so let's look at the action buttons so this is action button so what this means um sometimes we want to you know call for actions sometimes because this click me is also input right drink me is input as well so you can see we have what you call action button, action button. This is the name, click me, drink me. Um, but you can see here, uh, we said icon. So which kind of icon? So we need to provide some time. You can see this is icon. So you want to provide some icon that relates to what you want to want to do, right? But how do you define this icon? How do you know where it is? So um, one of the, uh, where you can find this icon is here. Um, so if you go to this place, uh, you find that font also. Uh, you can see many, you know, names, you know, for example, here, call me phone. So you can see here, I have something called phone. So I can copy this guy. I can say, okay, so icon is phone or no phone. The name is phone. 
Um, so I can put here the call me, right? Call me, right? So I can say call me and I can, so you can see here, we have the call me button, right? And I say call me. So this allow you to, you know, call action to allow you to use, to reflect, to use something that reflect what you want to do, right? So this is called action button that, that asks users to respond. So it's like a call of action to do something. You're asking your user to do some kind of stuff. So this is basically, um, you know, action button. Um, uh, you can customize the button as well. So, but we can see here the button looks, you know, by default, you know, the color, right? Uh, you can customize it. How can we customize the action button? So for us to customize the action button, we can see here where action button, click me, class. So we have something called class argument here. So when we go to action button here, we can see um, we have uh, action button, uh, blah, 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 blah. action button, right? Action button. All right, so we have action link, we have action button. So action button, we are talking about action button. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so we have action button and optional is in icon. So where do you find this, uh, um, where to modify this? So if we go the, here, if we go here, uh, what we can see here, the first one, let me run this one. Um, the action button, click me, class, I have this. So when I run this guy and I view this, you can see click me. You can see them, we put them different color, right? We can see them, we put them different color, right? Um, now, how do you basically, um, also you can see another one, fluid row, yeah, it me, right? How can we change these colors? So you can change these colors. If you come here, we can see all these colors, right? Um, by default, um, yeah, you can see that. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Let me go directly to the place. Okay, so I think um where you can see them here, for example, for example, you can see default. You can see, you know, all the example and uh, you can see for default, you know, you can see, for example, this color primary, you can see, it, you know, this one button success. So for example, sometimes you can want to add user success, one in danger. So you can see um, button info, you can see button primary, button success, button info, button warning, uh, button danger, you know, so all this one convey meaning to assistive technology, you can see them. So they convey meaning to, you know, what do you want to do? But look at this one as well, you know, the sizes. So you can see on a button, LG means large, you know, button LG, um, you know, button primary. So button small and button extra small. So you can see, for example, this one button XX extra small. So let's go back to here. Um, We can see this one, this danger and this. And so this is how, all this in works. All right. Um, any question or anyone want to ask anything? Uh, I know that Shine use some version of Bootstrap that's the framework of CSS. Mm -hmm. But it seems that it's using Bootstrap version 3.3. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a really important reference because I think Bootstrap is in version 5. Or, yeah, uh -huh. I, by default, China use an old version of Bootstrap. And I know that we can also update the Bootstrap version using the BS. I, th I know it's like BS something library. Yeah, BS Live, BS Live library. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't know that <laughs> because this is my first time. All right, but uh, it's interesting to know. So what you are saying basically is that um, one cannot use the uh, Bootstrap five, right? Is that correct? At least um, not by default. Yes, at least not by default. Yeah, by default. That's, yes. But you, but that's important that you know that. China have some build classes, the mm -hmm. CSS classes that is already defined that you mm -hmm. can access by these classes that you don't need to define, but you need to know them. That's maybe even another course to understand Bootstrap because it's a whole framework also. Exactly, Bootstrap. yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool.
thank you very much for adding this stuff. Um, yeah, and yeah. Okay, cool. So I think um we have seen um you know the input side um from what we are working on. Um right, the next part is output, right? So anyone wants to add something regarding to the input or we are good. Okay, so let's move on to the output. So you can have, you know, your input. Um, every input is matched for what do I say? What the English? Each out output output in the UI create placeholder that later filled by the server function. Each output function in the in on the front end is coupled with render function in the back end. So this is what I'm going to remember. Each output function on the front end is coupled with a render function in the back end. So let's look at what this means. So we do have, um, you know, uh, oh, this is what I want to say. We do have every render. If I have render text, I must have, uh, you know, text output. Um, render print, I must have this. So let's look at an example now. Um, this guy. Okay, so when we look at this here, we have text output, we have verbatim text output, and we have a name called text, we have name love called code, right? Now, every output here must have the corresponding render. So text output, we must have render text, and you can see hello frame. And this level, you must have it output this, symbol then you put this level so every output must have the corresponding render stuff barbative output um it must have the level is called code we must have output then add this sign then we have code and now we must have the equivalent render of this guy because this is text output it is equivalent render is render text for example when we say render output text output we can see this um yeah render output um render okay test output only okay um yeah so we can see here that um uh because it's uh text output we have something render text here and here we have bubble team text output we have something render print so this is what Primarily, they want to say is that for each output, it must have correspondence. So let's run this guy and see what will happen. So we can see here this one, um, you know, the render text, it just put in hello friend. And we can see this is hello friend, but render print, it prints something summary here. So you can see here the way these two things are print, even though they are text. Um, somebody said this is uh, verbatim text, this is output, but the way they are printed is different, right? Um, you can see the, um, you can see all as well that um, this one is printed as something like, uh, you know, like code in R, and this one is just like text-based stuff. Um, one thing we should also notice is that uh, we have some kind of uh, open braces like this and this one. So if you have uh, multiple lines, you must have these open braces in the render part. But if you have a single line, you can have, um, you know, a single uh, line without that stuff. So let's look at what I mean. Um, so this is what I mean is that you can see uh, instead, because here we have only hello output, hello friend. We didn't have these, you know, open braces, you know, and we only have render text, hello friend, and we have render friend and this. So what this is that if you have a single line, you need not to have this one. But if you have multiple lines in your code, you must have that one. So if we render this guy, we can see, see this give us the same thing. Um, so finally, you can see um, the render, the text output. Oh, no, no, no. The render text and render print, uh, this is equivalent to the difference between cat and print in base R. If you remember uh, how cat and print using the R. They print differently. So that's the main difference between, um, you know, render print and uh, render test output. All right. So that is the, the first one. Any question before we move on? Anyone want that? Anything? 
Um, okay, cool. So let's move and see the tables. So tables are also um, a way in which, um, um, you know, we can see the output from our input. So we have what we call table output and render table. So we can see table output render table, um, which render is static data. And we have table output when we have render table data. So we can see render a dynamic. So we can see we have static, we have a dynamic. What this means, let's run this guy and see what happens. Now, you can see we have library, um, shiny, we have full table output, we have table data, and we say, okay, this is a level dynamic, static dynamic. And now here we said render head empty cars. You can see here render empty cars, but here we say render table empty cars option, list page length, um, we specify some kind of stuff. And when we run this guy, you can see what happened. So you can see here, this one, the first one, render table is static. It, you cannot change and, you know, but render data table is somehow, you know, dynamic. You can say, okay, give me 15. You can see that. And we can say, you know, give me 10. And you can see that. And now you can move along as well um, into the previous, into the next and whatsoever. So this is basically the difference between the two. Um, but if we look at the render table um, here, we can see the table output or render um, table, table output. You can see the table output and with this corresponding render table, uh, PR create a reactive table that is suitable for display small matrices and data frames. Small. So if you have small matrices and data frame, the column are formatted with um, this stuff. So um, what I'm trying to say is that if you have small data that you just want to show and you don't want to you know, allow users to uh, play with that, you can use that. But if you have large data, like you want to users to be able to, um, you know, uh, see what is happening with different part of the data. It's better, I think, to use render table, you know, um, uh, the dynamic one, because you can see this one as much the same data, but here it only shows, you know, some sample, right? Because it's static. Um, but uh, here, because we use the dynamic, it allows us to see the complete data. You can see we can go to the next, out uh, to the last one. In fact, we can even search because the late data is too large, it's very large. We can even search, but this one you cannot search, right? So if you have a very couple of, you know, sample data, you want to bring them, you can just use this one. But if you allow user to explore the data, to see what is happening in the data, to see the story in the data, and to see different kind of, you know, maybe some behavior and something that they can learn. So it's better to render the table. Okay, that's about the table. Anyone want to add something? Yes, I want to point out the data table that we see here, even though it's dynamic, is mm. no pointing the saver to change. So every time that you filter or change a role, it doesn't affect the server because I have used that table for creating a static dashboard using mm -hmm. flesh table. And mm -hmm. it comes from the DT package. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you don't need a server to, to make those modifications. So both I like a static, even though there is some customization. It's like an estimation widget mm. uh, for, for Shiny. Yeah, mm. no all interactivity in your Shiny app needs to point the server part. Mm. And that is one of the opportunities, the, the data table one. Okay. So the data table, you don't need to, it doesn't affect your server. You just, you know, it's somehow we can see, um, yeah, Some it uses like JavaScript, you know, to yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. interactivity. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, I see. Yeah. That's why they call it dynamic because it's used interactive way to, you know, do this stuff. Exactly. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. And I um, know there is another package very popular, a React table, but I don't yeah. know that. Mm -hmm. That's, you can really do really cool stuff with that. With that okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, then, okay, this is what we have just seen right now. Um, then there are other stuff which, uh, you know, um, output, uh, plots and download, right? So we can see something like this plot. Um, this is also another library. Um, you know, we have plot output, right? And we call it plot and we give it the width and, you know, in the server, we have input output and we say render plot. So um, 
what I understand is that, uh, you know, um, uh, is, is there any pattern because uh, it hasn't been said, but what I was thinking is that if for something to do, um, you know, plot, we say plot output. So this, um, you know, uh, is something like plot. And then we say render plot. Um, here we have table output, right? Table output, then we say render table. So I was thinking, is there any pattern? Is it the way they are? They add the same thing. For example, you said data table output. We call it render data table. So from these two, can we generalize they are all like this or not? <laughs> because I was trying to, you know, make a pattern to see how we can remember to text output, render text. Um, barber tip test output, render print. So you can see this one differs, right? Uh, I was thinking to say render barber tip text. But it just it is just called render print. I don't know if you understand the point I want to make. Yeah, we will need to <laughs> to remember this and that's it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So here we see that um we have plot output, we have render plot, uh, the same thing as well. We can see um this is something um, you know, we have the plot. And if we look at this, um, we can see. Um, it has a lot of other stuff, for example, the width, the height, um, you know, many other things that you can customize your plot, um, you know, to see um, what's happening. Okay. Um, yeah. And we have the download as well and download button, um, you know, that you can use uh, to do that. Similar to what we have there before in, you know, uh, MP, uh, this one, the, what's the name of that uh, button? Action button, right? action button you can see that um so you can see action button we have this right uh because it is input action button we just see so the download button is output so you just have the load button and you know you can also have that lonely similar to that okay so that's um the end of the chapter two but i think um uh you know this book um this uh, lecture notes they have uh, added some stuff uh, consider using bootstrapping and all this stuff uh, to do that. But uh, the book finish um, actually uh, where I have the code. Um, other materials, um, ISO shiny extension, shiny widget, um, all this stuff. So does anybody know what these are? I haven't. I don't know. Uh, what is this awesome shiny extension? Okay, this is extension of shiny. Oh, it's not there. Oh, okay. Mm. Right. What about this one? Um, like shiny buttons, custom buttons, something like that. What is uh, this shiny? One. Oh, okay. This is a framework of Absalom to create shiny apps. They have a the Renoverse. Mm -hmm. It's also a framework to create whole shiny apps. Okay. From it, it, it's a validation. You have to for dashboard. It's like a, a home framework for Chinese. Okay, thank you very much. It's for uh, Chinese mobile you have to create mobile apps. I know that. Oh, you can create oh. mobile app with Chinese. Yeah, you know, like it's web browser, not like native ones. <laughs> but uh -huh. yeah, you can create them. Oh, uh, I can see the... no mm -hmm. support since 2012. So maybe no support since 2012. <laughs> I don't know. There's no, no, I have seen some of them, you know. Uh -huh. uh, in mobile, but maybe the main the main part and part is that when you want to have your shiny app in a mobile device, also mm -hmm. you need really to to create first the mobile view before the other one because you will have a lot of stuff to put. So you need to make sure ah okay this fit in this screen, so then you can create the the the, the bigger one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, I have seen some some shiny so app. What is this one? Shiny material. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, shiny dashboard. What is shiny yeah, dashboard? A French word to create dashboard. So you, we have two main dashboard. Shiny dashboard that is the most flexible one, and we mm -hmm. have flesh dashboard that is based on Markdown. Our Markdown. Ah. So okay, okay, I see. Oh, okay. So you I... have more more freedom to create dashboard with this framework ah but they are not shiny right 
Yeah, yeah, he's part of China. Okay, okay. All right, thank you very much. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay, All right. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, that's um what we got today. Um, next week uh, we do have um, uh, let me check in the same chapter. So, uh, next week we have Abdul. Um, Abdul is not here today, but I uh, hope Abdul will be able to attend next week. I will chat with him. Um, yeah. So, uh, I think I can put um, stop in the chat so that uh, that's end our.